not burned incense nor offered burnt offerings in the holy place unto the God of Israel. Wherefore the wrath of the Lord was upon Judah and Jerusalem, and he hath delivered them to trouble, to astonishment, to hitzing, as ye see with your eyes. Praise God. I want you to look with me back again tonight. I want to read this verse once again. The Bible said in verse number 7, And they have shut up the doors of the porch and put out the lamps and have not burned incense nor offered burnt offerings in the holy place unto the God of Israel. Amen. I'm going to preach to us tonight, if the Lord would help us, on the thought we need the lamps to be burning. Amen. In the book of, in the book of uh, Leviticus, chapter number 24, and verses number 1, I'll read to you a verse there. Leviticus 24 and verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Command the children of Israel that they bring unto thee pure oil, olive, beaten for the light, to cause the lamps to burn continually. Praise God. Without the veil of the testimony in the tabernacle of the congregation shall Aaron order it from the evening unto the morning before the Lord continually. It shall be a statue forever and for in forever in your generation. Ye shall order the lamps upon the pure candlestick before the Lord continually. Praise God. You might be seated tonight. We need the lamps to be burning. I'd like to preach just for a few moments here tonight. Amen. Psalmist David said in Psalms chapter 119 and verse 105, said, Thy word, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Praise God. It's important tonight that the lamps of God are burning. It's important tonight that we know uh, where our feet are walking. Praise God. In our text tonight, we have read to us concerning the, the wicked reign of the king of Ahaz. And uh, just as Ahaz's reign had ended, and we see during his reign, the Bible teaches us that they desecrated the house of God and listen, the Bible said they shut up the doors of the porch and put out the lamps. Amen. And the judgment of God fell upon them. Uh, but now we can read in the word of the Lord here that now a, 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 the Bible said Ahaz's reign had ended and Hezekiah has now come. To be king and now he has taken over the rulership and uh, he has a heart uh, and his heart is in the right place. He desires for this to be restored and the Bible said Hezekiah, amen, has seen the need, praise God, of repairing the doors of the porch yeah. and the Bible teaches us he saw that the lamps began to once again burn. Praise God. Uh, I'm, I want to say here tonight, I don't know about everyone, if I can speak for everyone tonight, but I am so glad tonight as we look over the church that the lights is on in the house of God. I'm glad tonight that we're able to be here in the house of the Lord. Praise God. Thank God. Amen. In too many pulpits tonight, in too many churches, I am seeing, praise God, too many lamps that one time burned that are now being put out. Praise God. I believe as long as God, amen, anoints the men of God to stand behind the holy place where I'm standing tonight and declare the full gospel of God, 
I believe that the lamps will continue to burn as long as the man of God, amen, is continuing to preach the word of the Lord. Thank God. Uh, it was only when we find in the scripture that the lamps of God uh, went out in the house of God that they began to bring in the abominations into the house of the Lord. Praise God. I begin to read uh, today, praise God, concerning what they'd done uh, with the vessels of God that were sanctified vessels. The Bible said they cut them into pieces. Those things, amen, that were sacred in the house of God, uh, they began to bring into the house of God the abominations, and it was only when the lamps of God was put out Thank God that these things begin to happen. And I thought it was when the lamps of God went out that they began to mix the holy with the unholy. Amen. It was when the lamps of God went out they began to offer offerings to other gods upon the brazen altar where God said they cut the holy vessels of God into pieces. Hallelujah. It was when the lamps of God went out that they begin to no longer put a difference between the good and the evil. Hallelujah. As you look around tonight in our society, we are experiencing a day of darkness uh, like you and I have never seen and experienced before. Unimaginable things are now being promoted that was one time a shame and disgrace throughout our society and our world. I've never seen time where sin, it seems now, is being elevated and being promoted and people now, amen, are loving darkness, the Bible said, rather than light because their deeds are evil. We are in a dark world tonight. Thank God I'm glad to be a part of the church of the living God. Hallelujah. I believe the Bible said God is light and in Him, is no darkness at all. Hallelujah. Thank God I believe tonight as long as God's church will do the will of God and be obedient to God that the lights will continue to burn. Amen. The lamps will continue to burn. Thank God. But I know tonight it is the desire of old Satan. Thank God those lamps that's been burning, that light that's been burning for all of these years for wayward souls that's out there lost without God. Hallelujah, the church has been a light in this old dark world. And many souls that have been wayward has found their way, thank God, to the house of God. And they carried, amen, their heavy burdens to the altar. And they found God and they turned their life around. The devil desired to cause them to go shipwreck. He desired to destroy their lives and take them under. But thank God that the light of God was shining in the darkness of a sinful world. Thank God somebody found their way to God. Aren't you glad tonight to be a part of the church of God? Hallelujah. Thank God for the light of Jesus. I tell you, friend, the devil desires to put out the light. Sister Ivy sings a song sometimes. She said, the flame has flickered. But the fire has never gone out. Thank God. I tell you, the devils are blowing, desiring to blow out the light and do away with the fire of God. But, oh, the light is still burning tonight. Hallelujah. 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 I want us to notice tonight. Thank God. It's really nothing when you consider an ordinary lamp, an ordinary lamp, will eventually go out. Praise God. If the lamp begins to burn oil and the oil runs out, that's going to tell us what's going to happen to the light. That lamp will go out. Praise God. But in our scriptures tonight, these lamps, listen, these lamps did not go out because they run out of oil. Hear me. Amen. They did not go out because they ran out of oil or because they had no Levites to keep putting the oil in the lamps. 
I want you to notice in the scripture tonight, the Bible said that the lamps were put out. There's a big difference in this, in a lamp going out and a lamp being put out. Amen. I believe it. we'll study this tonight. Amen. There was somebody with a willing hand. Thank God that turned off the lamps. Praise God. Somebody that did not want the lamps to burn any longer. They did not want the light to shine any longer. I want to ask us the question tonight. Why would an individual, why would a man intentionally want to put out the lights? Hear me tonight. The devil's got a plan. The devil's got a, a goal and a desire. Praise God to put out the lamp of God. Now, why would somebody intentionally want to be putting out the lights? I believe we can find the answer in the book of John chapter 3 and verses number 19. The Bible said this is the condemnation that light is coming to the world. And men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. Oh my, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. Hallelujah. I have never seen such an aggression from a liberal society in a liberal world that hates the truth and that hates the gospel. And anybody that stands for the truth and the gospel, they despise and reject and hate it. Come on, church. Hallelujah. The Bible said plainly right here. Thank God that the Bible said, amen, listen, because condemnation, amen, the, the light is coming to the world. Men love darkness rather than light. Their deeds are evil. Everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. My Lord, my Lord, is that not what we're seeing today? Everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. Praise God. Oh, I think about tonight, thank God the way I was brought up and the way I was raised. Thank God these preachers preached hell hot. They preached the truth to me. Thank God they said, amen, it's still straight and a narrow way that leads to heaven. And the Bible said that there would be few that find it because there is a broad road. Wide is the gate. Broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be that go in thereat. Praise God, my friend. I was preached to the right way. I was preached to the straight and narrow way. I was raised up this way. Come on. And I am very grateful for the way that I was raised. And I'm finding myself in these last days, in this last generation, sister. I'm finding myself becoming very very unaware and, and not fitting in with the society that we are seeing today in this generation. Thank God for the truth of God that has been proclaimed through the years. The righteousness of God is being despised and hated in this generation today. Thank God I've never seen a time, amen, when we are seeing a generation, amen, that my, you can't even preach against some things that used to be something that was preached across the board. Amen. It didn't matter what denomination you was a part of. Amen. Sin was sin. Come on, church. Amen. Homosexuality. Amen. It was a sin among the Pentecostal and among the Amen Baptists and the Methodist. Amen. The Presbyterians. Amen. But now we are seeing a generation today where the Bible said in the last days they were called evil good and good evil. Thank God we are seeing now folks at one time took a stand amen, against men marrying men and women marrying women. Now the churches are taking them in. Now they're being promoted. Now they're being ordained amen, to be preachers in the house of God. Somebody read Reached up, hear me. Somebody reached up and they turned out the lamp. Somebody reached up intentionally and they turned out the light. Amen. If I read right in 
the word of God. The Bible said the light of that lamp was to be continually burning from the morning till the night. And it was to never to be put out. It was to be ever burning. But somebody hated the light. Somebody despised the truth. Somebody reached up there and turned off the lights. I'm telling you, we're living in a generation today. Amen. A church world that knows better than what they're doing. They know better than the way they're living. But somebody, amen, brother, they're reaching there and they're turning out the light. Come on, church. Hallelujah. We need the lamps of God to be burning bright. Hallelujah. How many knows that the oil of the lamp of God represents the Holy Ghost? Represents the spirit of Almighty God. Hallelujah. There was a time when the lamps of God was burning so bright in the house of God. People feared to come into the house of God with sin in their lives. Hallelujah, living a hypocrite life, one way out in the world and one way in the church. They was afraid to do that because while the lamps of God was burning bright, the Holy Ghost of God, the oil of God, hey, big brother, was burning in the house of God. And the Bible said when the Holy Ghost is come, hey, big, the Bible said he shall reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Thank God. When the lights is burning, my friend, sin's not comfortable. When the lamps are burning, amen, sin's not comfortable. Oh, God, let the lamps be burning again, Lord. Let the Holy Ghost fill the church again, God. Hallelujah, where people will fear the Lord and serve God in sincerity. Come on. Hallelujah. We need the lamps of God to be burning. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How is the lamps of God going to be burning? Listen to me. Got to preach to you just a minute. If I understood right in studying this out, praise God, the, the Levite's responsibility, him at the priest's responsibility, was to make sure that there was oil in those vessels. Those lamps was to continually be burning from the morning until the evening. But if I read right in the scripture, the Bible said it was the congregation. They were to bring beet olive oil. That was what they were to bring to the Levites and to the priests. They were to bring that oil. Praise God when they brought that oil to the priests and to the Levites, to the sanctuary of God. The Levites would take that oil, praise God, and they would put in the lamps and fill those lamps and keep those lamps burning. Why am I saying that to us tonight, church? Hallelujah, it's important from the front pew all the way to the back pew. Hallelujah, for us to be doing what God has called us to do. Hallelujah. We wonder why it's got so cold in the church. We wonder why the power of God and the spirit of God, amen, is not operating and moving among the people of God. Have you brought your oil? Hear me tonight. Have you brought your oil to the house of God? Not just any kind of oil, but pure oil. Oil, amen, that's been beaten. Oil that's pure. Thank God to burn in that lamps. Thank God that the people of God, amen, will live sanctified on Monday, sanctified on Tuesday, sanctified on Wednesday. Thank God walk right, talk right, live right. When they come to the house of God, Sister Woods, they'll have some oil. Amen. They'll have the anointing. They'll have the power of God moving in their lives. And we'll have something to pour in the lamp to keep the light of God burning in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, Lamb of God. Lamb of God. Lamb of God, you can't burn a lamp without oil. Hallelujah. Hear me. Amen. Thank God. I'm going to tell you, you can't have the anointing of God. Thank God without living right. Come on, church. Hallelujah. Thank God. 
the priest and the Levites, the pastors and the men of God that preaches the word of God. It's hard for God to anoint us. Hallelujah, when there's sin. Hallelujah, when there's sin. They've been lurking around in the church. Come on. Hallelujah. When there's not a free spirit and the power of God is being hindered and the spirit of God's not moving, it's a sure sign. Somebody don't have the oil that they need in their life. Somebody's not living the way they need to live before God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I thought, brother, amen, brother Clarence preached so wonderful. Amen, Friday night. And he mentioned about how that we come to the house of God. And amen, he said we all should have the spirit of God upon us and in our lives. Amen, I might not shout, I hear it all the time, might not shout up and down the aisle every service I go, Brother Smith. I understand what you're saying. Amen, but my friend, if you're dry every time you come to church and you don't have uh, the victory of God in your life, the Spirit of God never moves upon you. The Spirit of God never, amen, thank God visits with you. Uh, something's wrong somewhere. Uh, hallelujah, come on church. Thank God I believe today hey, that we need to be a vessel. Thank God, hallelujah, that the Spirit of the Lord hey, that can move upon our lives. Glory to God, hallelujah. Uh, in our hour that we're living, if there's ever a time, this generation, they need to see the lamps of God burning among us. Hallelujah. They're hear me tonight. It's dark out yonder in the world. There ain't no light out yonder in the world. Hey, but when they come into the house of God, when they come into the presence of Almighty God, hey, but brother, there needs to be a light. There needs to be a glow. There needs to be some lamps that are burning with the power of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The devil's putting out too many lamps. Hear me preaching to somebody tonight. The devil's trying to put out the lamp. He don't want the light of God to shine among us. He don't want the spirit of God to move among us. Thank God he wants to put it out. Amen. Oh, glory. Church, may I say to you tonight, I'm preaching to some and I'm pastoring to some. Right here, I'm not pastoring to the church down the road. But I'm pastoring to some, my friend. They're letting the devil put out their lamps. They one time burned for God. They one time was on fire for God. But something has caused their lamps. Amen. To go out. We're in the last of the last days. We're in the last mile of our journey. And if we've ever needed the lamp of God, I'm telling you, hear me tonight. The devil's got landmines. The devil's got traps. The devil's got all kinds of things to try to trip us up and hinder us from crossing over the finish line. We need the light of God. We need the lamp of God to shine upon our path that we may make a successful journey. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hear me tonight. Hear me tonight. Amen. If I've ever been anointed, Amen. If I've ever had the light of God burning more than I have it burning right now. If I've ever been anointed more than I am right now. I need to be concerned and I need to be very burdened for my soul. Has God changed? He's still on the given hand. Hallelujah. If I read right in the scripture of the last day saith God. I will pour out of my spirit. Come on. Hallelujah. I remember when the Lord first called me to preach this gospel. I preached revivals. 
I preach right here revivals. Thank God, and I remember the anointing and the power of God. Hallelujah. I want to tell you tonight, amen, I'd get in this altar and pray all night long. Hallelujah. If I have lost, if I'm not being anointed, if God's not touching my life, I want to get in the altar. And I want to say, oh, Lamb of God, don't let my lamp go out now. Hallelujah. If I've ever needed it, I need it now. Oh, glory to God. Church, if we've ever needed the power of God and the anointing, we need it today. Hallelujah. Thank God forever. Amen. There was a young lady. Amen. Here in the church this morning. Thank God she come up to be anointed today. And she said, I'm in trouble. My life is in trouble. I need help. Amen. While I'm preaching right now today, I did not even know it until right now. And I looked. Do you know where she's at right now? Amen. She's on her knees right now. Praise God. She said, my life is in trouble. I need help. I didn't even know it till I looked right there. She's on her knees right now. The devil wants to put out that light. The devil don't want her to make heaven her home. Amen. But you know what she's a doing? She's a crying out to God. Oh, amen. Whatever it takes, oh God. Whatever it takes, oh God. Amen. Let the lamp of God continue to burn. Hallelujah. I want to make it in. Amen. Lift your hands and praise the Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. The lamps need to be burning tonight. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I tell you, I could preach on, I could preach on. I'm going to tell you tonight, you know better than anybody else. Whether you're burning as bright as you have burned. Come on. Hallelujah. I got to preach to you just a moment and I'm going to make an altar because I feel like some people need to right here in this service tonight. Amen. And I've, been, I've, been, I've been watching some people. Amen. As I said, I pastor some people and I've been watching them. I've watched them as they begin to pull away. Hallelujah. They're not where they one time was with God. Some of them's got callings in their life. Some of them God has moved in their life. Praise God, hear me tonight. I'm not going to shun to declare the truth. Amen. The devil wants to put out my light. He wants to put out, amen, my lamps. Hear me tonight. Amen. I've, I've prayed and I've asked God. I said, God, what do I need to do about it? What do I need to tell them? What do I need to say to them? That they will get back where they were with God. You know what God's dealt with me? Hear me. This is what God's dealt with me. God's told me, he said, they know what they need to do. They know what they need to do. If you go to them and tell them, they're going to do nothing but get worse. They know what they need to do. It's left up to them and what they're going to do about it with God. I can't make it. I can't cause them to go to heaven. I can't carry them to heaven. There's nothing I can do if you don't have a made up mind. Hey, man, brother, to go to heaven. Brother, my friend, you won't never make it. You're going to have to get a determination. Thank God I'm not going to let the devil put out my lap. Praise God. Come on, church. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I could not go to them and tell them nothing that they don't already know. Come on. I told a pastor the other day, they were talking to me, and more than one pastor, more than one pastor. I told them, we were talking confidential between us pastors. I said, my number one challenge as a pastor in today's world, in our society right now, I'm not having too much trouble with people's dressing wrong. I'm not having too much trouble with people going to sinful places. I said, but what I'm having trouble with is folks has got so involved with their families. Folks has got so involved with their own self, desire, what they want. And to the place we're trying to pull everything we can to keep people on fire and fervent in their spirit for almighty God. 
Hallelujah. And I've had pastors tell me, Brother Smith, we're dealing with the same exact thing at our church. It ain't that they're going to the wrong places of the world, but it seemed like they're losing their fervency and their desire and their love. Jesus dealt with it in the book of Revelation when he looked at that church of Laodicea. He said, I've got someone against you because you left your first love. Oh, Lamb of God, we're dealing with that right now in this generation. The devil says, if I could just get them, hallelujah, their lamps to quit burning. If I can get them to lose the anointing of the power of God, he's won the battle, my friend. Hallelujah. 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 Brother Smith, I'm, I've got to come to a close because I want to open the altar for us to pray tonight. Amen. You a preacher, you don't know about how we're tempted and tested and tried. I want to tell you what. It's taken everything I got to push against this evil tide. It ain't just the layman. It ain't just you sitting in your pews. I'm telling you, we're living in the last moments of time. And the devil's time is short and he knows it. And the Bible said he's come down having great wrath. He's, he's pressing from the back pew all the way to the pulpits. He's coming against us with everything he's got. And I'm going to tell you the only way you're going to defeat him, you're going to have to come against him with every ounce of strength that you can get God Almighty. You're not going to win the warfare laying down. You're not going to win the warfare sitting on the side of the road. Thank God you're going to have to square your shoulders back and let the devil know I'm not going to let you blow out my lamp. Praise God. Since the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of God suffered violence and the violent take it by for say man, thank God it's time we stand up church. Amen and let the devil know. Amen. God gave me a light. Amen. God gave me oil. God gave me anointing. And I'm not gonna let the devil put out my lamp. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. I'm coming to a close right here. Amen. Now, I'm not trying to be comical because I'm very serious in what I'm saying. Amen. But I remember that little old story when I was in grade school about the three little pigs. Hallelujah. Here come that old wolf. Lord to God. He went over there where that straw hut was, built out of straw, built out of twigs. Praise God. And the, and the story said... Those three little pigs was in there, and that story said that wolf went up there, and he said, I'm going to huff, and I'm going to puff until I blow your house down. Come on. Hallelujah. He huffed and puffed. That old house that was built out of them straw and twigs fell to the ground. Come on. Went down there, and there was one built out of, I believe, mud. Or, praise God. Wasn't built out of much. He said, I'm going to huff and puff till I blow you. He blowed it down. But there was one of them. He built his house out of stone. He built his house on the rock. And that old, amen, that old wolf said, I'm going to huff and puff till I blow your house down. Lord to God, God help me preach right here just a minute. I want to be built out of something that that old wolf Runs out of breath. Come on. Huff and puff. Huff and puff. Huff and puff. Hallelujah. Until he runs out of breath. But when I built on the solid rock of Christ Jesus, brother. Hallelujah. The gates of hell. Shall not prevail against it. Hallelujah. Build on the rock, church. Make sure you settle. Hallelujah. Thank God. Make sure you're burning. Make sure you're where you need to be with God. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Sister, just because we're built on the rock don't mean he ain't going to huff and puff. 
The Bible said, upon this rock I build my church. Listen, I want to tell you, catch a hold of this right here. Catch a hold of it. Upon this rock I build my church. And the gates of hell, listen, the gates of hell will come against you. The gates of hell will blow against you. The gates of hell will press against you. Some people act like once you get saved, you ain't going to never have no problem with the devil. I'm telling you, the devil's going to come against you with everything he's got. Hallelujah. But he said, the gates of hell shall not prevail against us. Hallelujah. I'm on the winning side. As long as I'll keep that lamp burning. Thank God, keep oil in the lamps. Oh, hallelujah. I don't know about you tonight. Hey, Amen, but I want more anointing. I want more power. I want a greater unction. Hey, Amen, I want a fresh anointing from heaven. Thank God in these last days, while there's some tooling off, while there's some falling by the wayside, thank God, brother, we better have a determination to hold on. Thank God and press our way forward. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hear me. Hallelujah. It hurts, and it hurts so bad. It crushes me. It crushes my heart when those I've loved and fellowship with and concerned about and prayed for and had brotherly love and sister companionship. Hallelujah. And I see them as they fall away. Hallelujah, sister. That's a hurt like no other hurt. Don't you think the devil don't try to discourage you with that? He discourages others among us. I sometimes wish I could shake some of them and say, look, don't you realize there's young people that's got their eyes on you? There's young converts that's looking at your life and they see how you've cooled off and you've backed up on God. I wish I could shake them and help them to see. Amen, but I want to tell some of you today, amen, you might be young in this thing. Thank God, listen, when they fall away, it hurts the preacher. I've been in this thing a long time, but I've got to be determined. If mama don't go, it won't hinder me. If daddy don't go, it won't hinder me. I've got to make it whatever the cost is, brother. The Bible said brothers shall betray brothers. Sisters shall betray sisters. The foes shall be of those, even of your own household. The Bible said the children would give their parents up unto death, thinking they're doing God a service. The devil's going to try to turn out the lights. They may turn out the lamps. But God help us tonight to hold fast that that unchanging hand of God and not be moved. Amen. I said, I'm so glad the lights is burning in the church tonight. We had to cut them off. We had to lock our doors because the COVID spread like wildfire right here in our church. I've got common sense. I think we ought to be careful. And I'm going to tell you, the devil would love nothing better than to close it every chance he got. Turn out the lights every chance he got. By the help and the grace of God, I wonder who will stand with me tonight and say we're going to declare victory in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank God we're going to claim victory over the pandemic, over COVID, over everything the devil tries to throw at us to try to turn out the lights in the house of God. Oh, he said whatever we bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever we loose upon earth shall be loosed in heaven. I'm going to declare tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. We're not backing down, but we're going to stand steadfast, unmovable in the faith of God. God gave me something, brother, that the devil couldn't give me. God gave me something that I couldn't find out yonder in the depths of the world. The devil would like to come and steal it away from us. But we need to get a grip on it with everything we got and fight for our souls. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. This young lady's praying, fixing to come to the altar. Destiny, hear me tonight. I'm telling you this because I love you. I would never embarrass nobody, but this ought not to embarrass nobody. Hey, I'm going to tell you tonight, you better get to digging, every single one of us. We better get to digging like we've never dug before. When these altars are open, don't sit back yonder on your pew. Hey, babe, but you get down in these altars and you get to digging. Thank God, destiny, you got saved. But if you're going to make it, sis, thank God you're going to have to go on. Hey, but run on with Jesus. It don't matter. They may talk about me. They may scandalize my name. But I'm going on with Jesus just the same. Get in these altars and dig. Get in these altars and get all you can from God. Let the lamps of God be burning in your life. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. As we stand all over the church tonight. Sister Rachel, come to the piano if you will. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Am I the only one that feels the powers and the pressures from the underworld that desires to do away with the anointing, do away with the lamps of God. I'm not the only one. We got them all over this church. I want to ask you a question, Sister Tawana. You're fighting for your life, honey. Hallelujah. There's other ones in this church. They're fighting for their lives. Oh, God, help us. Amen. I'm telling you, if God would give us the Holy Ghost strength, hallelujah, we need to give the devil one good fight. Amen. Like we've never gave before. Let him know we're not going to surrender. Thank God, but we're going to fight for what God give us. Hallelujah. Thank God. All of these. I think about Sister Rachel, different ones over this church tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sister Selena in the, in the altar this morning. Thank God she's got such a hurt and a desire and a, and a, a hunger in her heart. Amen. And that lying, tormenting devil does everything he can to try, amen, to tear her down. Glory to God. But if she's listening to me tonight over by the ways of Facebook or whatever, Sister Selena, hallelujah, let God help you. Amen. Fight for your life, sister. Amen. Fight against the devil. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'll tell you tonight, amen, I've never said this while I'm preaching, but I feel like fighting. Praise God, I feel like fighting. I'm not fighting you. I'm not fighting you. I got a devil tonight. Amen. He's coming every which way. Amen. And I want God to give me the Holy Ghost boldness. Amen. To fight against the forces of hell. I wonder if there's anybody in the church that'll say, Brother Smith, I'll join you tonight. Amen. I'm ready to go to war against the powers of hell. They've hindered me long enough. They've hindered my family. They've hindered my loved ones. Come on, amen. Come on, hallelujah. Amen. Let's go to the altar. Come on, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah.
took off the weight and laid down the sin. I made up my mind that I'm gonna win. The shackles have fallen, chains now are gone. But I'm running with Jesus. I'm going on. I'm running on with Jesus. I'm going on. And when the streets turn to go. Oh 
Praise the Lord. Amen. Are we just going to lay down and let the devil cause our lamps to go out? Or are we going to give the devil a fight and let him know we're going to keep the fire of God burning in our lives? Praise God. I understand that sometimes this old flesh gets tired and weary. But that's the reason why I come to church just like here tonight. Because when I'm getting a little bit low, I say, Lord, here's my cup, Lord. Fill it up, Lord. Hallelujah. The Lord comes and replenishes, Brother Chris. Thank God that all. And you know what it does? It gives me the power and the strength to fight on. Hallelujah. But my friend, if we get weak, and you know sometimes the devil gets us when we're at our weakest place. But we need to stay strong in the Lord and the power of his might. You're only going to do that by fighting your way through. I haven't never seen anybody backslide on God that was fighting. Come on. Most people that backslides on God quits fighting. They just quit and the devil takes over. Don't quit whatever you do. If you fall flat on your face, don't quit. Don't listen to the devil. Get up and go on. Praise God. Fight with all you've got. That you ain't got but one soul, church. One, one time to do something about it. Thank God. Do everything you can. Keep your soul. Praise God. Amen. Anybody felt the presence of the Lord tonight? Thank God for coming among us. We appreciate him so good. If you got a word, anybody, anybody want to testify? Praise God. Anybody want to testify? Hallelujah. Well, it's been good Sabbath, good Lord's Day today. We've enjoyed it all day, the presence of God. We thank God for it. Amen. Our hearts are still desiring to see folks get what they need from the Lord, get help. Amen. I want you to pray for my wife and myself. As we leave late tomorrow evening, once we get off of work, we're going to travel during the night, and we're going to go to Georgia. It's right at the Florida state line, down around Waycross, Georgia is where we're going, and we'll be spending the night going to Brother Mathis's funeral on Tuesday at 11 o'clock. Pray that the Lord will give us a safe trip there and back. I'm going to be going there tomorrow evening traveling Monday and then coming back home on Tuesday, traveling here Tuesday. I will come back here for Wednesday. I'll be here for Wednesday night. And then Thursday, I've got to leave out and go back to Georgia again and then come back home. So I'll be doing a lot of traveling this week. And i like for the Lord just to keep us safe on the journeys. Amen. Anybody else tonight before we come to a close? Yes, brother. I'll tell you this as I come to a close. I've talked to some of our elders that's gone on to be with the Lord. And some of them's told me this. In fact, Brother Martin Means from Kentucky. Anybody remember Brother Means? He used to come around, Brother Means. Brother Means was dying on his dying bed, Holy Ghost filled man. This was his testimony when he was dying. He looked at the people gathered around his bed. He said, folks, the devil will fight you till you draw your last breath. 
Praise God. Just because you're older don't mean you ain't got some. I found some of these elders told me they're fighting now more than they've ever fought before. Praise God. It's going to be a fight, but if you've got a determination, you'll, you'll put up a fight, praise God, against the devil for your soul. Amen. I tell you what, you'll fight for your children too. You'll fight for your families. Amen. Thank God. I'm not just fighting for me. I'm fighting for my family. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank the Lord. Destiny, I'm fighting for you, sis. I want to see you go on. Praise the Lord. I'm so glad for what the Lord's done for her. Is there anybody else tonight? Well, Amen. Andy, just remember. The, uh, go ahead, sir. Go ahead, sister.
Amen. I want to say this. I was thinking, I want to say this as, as, as very careful as I know how. And I'm saying this not just to Sister Angie, but to all of us tonight. When we contemplate the thought of looking back and going back into the world, after what all God has done for you, listen, how many know, Sister Angie, what is there to turn back to? What in the world is there in sin to turn and away from Jesus and what Jesus has done for us and go back into the weaker and beggarly elements of the world? What is there to turn back to? Glory to God. My friend, Sister Angie, the devil can lie to us and tell us to turn back. We need to talk back to the devil and say, devil, you ain't got nothing for me to turn back to. Praise God. Nothing but heartaches, troubles, and sorrow. There's nothing. I'm going to fight on for the Lord. Amen. Now, I'm going to say this. I'm going to add to it. If somebody turns and gives up on God and goes back into sin, I'm not going to say 100% of the time. 90% of the time, when somebody gives up and goes back into the world, something began to attract them. Something be got their attention. Something began to pull at them, and they started going that way. When the things of the world begins to look attractive to you, you better hit the altar. You better pray until God helps you lose the attractions of the world because if the world's a pulling at you and attracting you, friend, the devil will pull you back. Amen. But God's done too much for every one of us. Let the devil pull us back into sin. Amen. I've, I've observed just recently some that has went back into the world. And I was shocked to see just how quick they started picking up things, putting on things, doing things that they were convicted of and in the church and was doing good. And they quickly picked them up. And I couldn't help but think, God, was that in their heart all the time? God, was that pulling on them all the time? I'm going to tell you what, friend. When you get saved, you're going to have to make up your mind. I'm leaving the world behind. I believe there's a lot of people that's in a struggle tonight because they're straddling the fence. They can't make up their mind whether they really want to go with God or take on some of the world. Amen. But you've got to leave the world behind if you're going to serve God. You can't have it both. Amen. Thank God we appreciate you tonight. I was thinking as you was testifying, sister, I couldn't help but see the folks sitting right behind you. Brother Smith and Sister Laura. And I was thinking about the fight that we have, uh, that we have serving God. And I thought, my, what a fight. I'm sure the devil has presented plenty of times. Don't drive that long drive all the way over there from Bennettsville to, to Mount Zion. You don't have to go tonight, but sister and brother, you're putting up a fight, amen, for, the, for your soul, driving all that. We got some folks that live right here close by, I'm saying within almost just a few miles, that could be here, and they're not here, and it's because they're not putting up a fight. I appreciate the fight that y'all putting up. Thank God God's going to help you. Now, I'm going to tell you, when you come to the end of the way and you get there, Thank God you're going to look back and you're going to say it was worth every mile. Every time the devil told me it wasn't worth it and I pressed on anyway, it's going to be worth it when we hear the Lord say, enter in. Praise God. Anybody else before I come to a close? Yes. Road lives on South Hilltop Road. Yeah, yeah. I don't know.
if you can go and support the meeting, please, please go and be there in support of the meeting. I know one thing, you will be blessed to hear Brother Vince, Brother Vince, the great man. If all hearts and minds is clear tonight, let's pray one for another and uh, just be back, Lord willing, Wednesday night at 730. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Look at it this way. We're going to dismiss. Look at it this way. I can't turn back. I can't turn back. If I turn back, I'll go to hell. I can't turn back. I may falter. I may fail. But I can't turn back. I've got to have a made up mind. Amen. Yes, brother. word on him. Yes, he did, Brother Robert. We are or we are going to be approached. The devil's going to come to us. He got more power within us than he that's in the world. Amen. God bless you. Love one another. You are dismissed until Wednesday night. Amen.